I, I'm just going to quickly tell a story. It's a story about language and a sound. To, you know, because uh, well, we're in, uh, we're in a bookstore full of language, and then we've also just heard a lot of music, which is sound. But before I, I do that, um, and you've been a very uh, wonderful audience, does anyone have any questions, perhaps, about the movie or the book? No, no pressure. Or I'm also very good on psychosomatic illness. It's the one thing I know a lot about. If anyone has any health-related questions, I could answer those quickly. Um, but if not, I can go into the story. Any questions? I know that uh, people are intrigued by the film, perhaps. No? Okay. The word intrigued backwards is uh, Deggy Ertney. I, I can, when I get nervous, I say words backwards. Stage is Egats. Uh, couch is Hikawa. Chair is Riach. Uh, Josh, who is a friend, his name is Hisaj backwards. Uh, backwards is Sadraka Cab. Ceiling is Ganiliak. Uh, microphone is Inachba Orkin. Okay. So, all right. <laughs> So, so quickly, a quick story from my life, which will end in a sound and sort of set you free into the night. Then afterwards, I, I will be signing books up here if you're interested. Um, anyway, so this is uh, the story of a sound and, and how it affected my life. So in the fourth grade, I, w I was very troubled. And some of you may have heard this story before. But um, I, I was wearing a corset. I was having back spasms at the age of eight. And I was living in New Jersey, and it was a very Victorian cure. The doctor suggested I wear a corset. So I would wear this corset under my sweatshirt. The other children didn't know. It was quite humiliating. There were these metal rods in the back, so I was quite morose. The other problem, which I think I can say in a bookstore, bookstore backwards is Erot's Coop, um, was that I had an elevated left testicle. For whatever reason, one of my testicles had gone into a hiding like a, a Jewish person in the Holocaust in an attic. It had gone up out of fear. I think I had learned in the war, in World War II, men in the bunkers, when the, the missiles were going overhead, their testicles would elevate. Like, okay, let's protect this part of the body. The head can get shot off, but let's keep the testicles safe in case the person wants to procreate later. But anyway, my system wasn't functioning that well in the fourth grade. Only one went up. I was so upset about the course. So corset, testicle, everything's off, but I'm learning how to read, uh, perfect for a bookstore, and back then in the early 70s in New Jersey, you learned how to read, you would have these large blue headphones on, it was called SRA, and you'd be plugged into a machine and a voice would be reading the book that you were following along. So I'm plugged in, the boy next to me named Francis Manziano, who we called Manzi, was to my right, and directly across from me was a boy named Jonathan Fat Eater. His last name was Eater, E-D-E-R, but we called him Fat because he was a little chubby. And so we called him Fat Eater. He was the son of a chiropractor, so he had a lot of kinetic energy in his body from being adjusted all the time. So he was just sort of, <laughs> life was coming out of him. He also had large glasses, and his hands were very dexterous because he was a prodigy on the piano. So anyway, we're listening, learning how to read. Suddenly he takes his headphones off, and out of the blue he goes, like that, for no reason at all. This little Buddha purr came right out of his belly, out of his mouth, it hit me in the third eye. I thought, I love that sound. So I took off my headphones, it had penetrated the headphones. I said, can you make that sound again? And again he went, like that. The boy next to me, Manzi, Manziana, goes, oh my God, I like it too. Make it again. Right away the teacher sensed that something creative and good was going on. She said, put your headphones on, learn how to read. We said, let's talk about that sound over lunch. So over lunch, the three of us began to make that sound, and a whole language came out of that sound. And here's what some of the language might sound like. We'd be like, <laughs> various emotions would be expressed. And we called this going hairy, because in the 70s, if you had a lot of wild hair, you were a hippie, you were crazy. So we were called the hairiators, and the, the act of making this sound was hairiation. And eventually, the sound got quite loud and was called the hairy call, which I'll do in a moment to sort of send you off into the night. But we would communicate like this, and we'd call each other Gee, Gee, what's up? Gee, 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 you know, and we would, uh, we knew what it meant. I know what it meant so at this moment. I'll let you know afterwards if you're curious. So sometimes on the playground, though, Manzi and I would get separated from Fat Eater, who was kind of our protector, our enforcer. And the more normal children would see that Manzi and I were alone, and so right away they wanted to pounce and hurt the uh, the children who were showing, uh, you know, signs of strangeness. So we would be getting attacked and we would call out for Fat Eater who might have gotten distracted and went off and we would do the loud sound, which I'll do for a moment, and Fat Eater would come running and dispel our attackers. Because he was the son of a chiropractor, he understood the human body, so he would kick kids in the ankles and they would topple over and then the, the matrons would come and take Fat Eater and bring him to the principal's office and we would console him with the original sound going, ah -hee, ah -hee, ah -hee, as he was taken off to the office. But, 
the way we would call him, the call for help, which some of you could try later if you like, is the Harry Call, and I'll do three of them now and then set you off into the night, and thank you for coming, and all the artists, but here are three Harry Calls, which was our, my early childhood call for help. And I won't really need the mic, and I'll do it in the three directions, because in case there are only three in the world, but there are four, but I'll do three. <laughs> all right, here are three Harry Calls. Thank you for coming. Last Books for LA, Books for Book Club. Have a good evening. Oh, we're all be at a bar later. What's the name of the bar? Uh, little Easy. Across little Easy. Little Easy across the street if you'd like to join us.